Hello, I'm Rebecca and welcome to episode one of the Journey Through Yarn Knitting podcast. Hi, as I said, I'm Rebecca. I am a knitter and a sewist and I do dabble in a little bit of crochet and I'm based in Scotland. I've been knitting, I mean I've been quite seriously knitting for the past two years. It was something which I learned as a child and I have quite vivid memories of my nana sitting me and my sister down and learning how to knit a garter stitched scarf. And yeah, I think two years ago, I don't know, I just kind of came back to it. I've been sewing for quite some time and I thought I needed something that I can just sit on the sofa and do something a little bit more portable that I could take out and about. I can't be taking a sewing machine out and about. Um, and yeah, knitting just came back in my life and I am absolutely delighted that it did. I haven't looked back. It's a huge part of my life. and I'm just very excited just to sit for the next 30 to 40 minutes and chat about all things yarn and knitting. I mean I've been watching knitting podcasters for the last probably two years and I absolutely love watching the people that make them. I find them incredibly inspiring and I learn an awful awful lot from them. I've been sharing a lot of my makes over on Instagram probably for the last 18 months to two years. I will link all my socials below. And again, the community over there is just wonderful. And I'm very, very lucky to be a part of it. So all of that combined, moving onto YouTube and starting a knitting podcast, it felt like the natural next step. And yeah, this is episode one and I'm very excited about it. I really like the traditional knitting podcast format where I would talk about my finished objects, or what I'm wearing, my finished objects, um, my works in progress and then any acquisitions or plans I have for the near future and that is what I intend to do so I suppose I better just jump on into it and start with what I am wearing. I am wearing and it's my only finished object so two in one. I am wearing the Field Sweater by Camilla Vad. It is constantly in the hot right now in Ravelry and it's all over Instagram. I'm sure a lot of you recognise it. But it is this beautiful, beautiful circular yoke sweater with this beautiful cable detail with like wheat, wheat and barley motifs and I love it. I really really love it. I actually would go as far as to say it's my favourite thing I've made, my favourite garment that I've made to date. Um, and yeah, well I finished it back in September with the intention of wearing it to the Scottish Yarn Festival. But actually the day that the Yarn Festival was, it was an absolute scorcher of a day in Perth and there was no way I was going to be wearing a woolly, thick, quite a dense, thick woolly jumper. It wasn't going to happen. So it has had a few outings since being finished, but this is my first time actually sharing it. I haven't put it on Instagram yet. But yeah, I'm really excited about it. Um, I made the size three. I have a bust circumference of about 95 centimetres, just for reference. And so I have about 10 centimetres of positive ease and I'm really happy with it. I like things to have a bit a bit more room, a bit more, be a bit looser. I will include some photos as well um, of me wearing the garment and maybe some b-roll as well. I really like it when podcasters do that just so you can see how the garment behaves when it's worn, how it drapes. So yes, I will try to remember to do that. For this project I used the Knitting for Olives Heavy Merino in the shade Hazel. It's this really beautiful, almost marled brown 
and I thought it was it was perfect just with the with the weak motifs and um, it gave it quite an autumnal feel. This was definitely not the recommended yarn. I had to kind of play around with my gauge a bit and I ended up sizing down to a 3.75 millimeter needle to achieve gauge and yeah the yarn I really really like this yarn. I love the beautiful range of colours that Knitting for All would offer. The quality is amazing. I'm very, very happy with it. The only thing I would say, and I think it was Benicia in, at The Woolly Worker in her last podcast episode said that she found it to be quite a dry yarn to work with. And I totally, totally agree. When it's, when you're working it, when it's running through your hands, it does have a very, very dry feel. And I mean, now that it's washed and it's been blocked, it's not rustic. I'm happy wearing this next to my skin. Um, it still feels on the dry side, but it has definitely softened since since it was in, a, in, in the ball. Um, and yeah, I would definitely use it again. It's just a comment which I thought was worth sharing if you're thinking about using this yarn. In terms of modifications to the patterns, I only made two modifications. The first was the collar. I really like to wear a double folded collar. I like how it looks, I like how neat it is around the neckline and it just feels a little bit tighter. You can always add a bit of elastic and it's just, I personally, it's my favourite kind of collar. So I just, um, modified it to be this. I tried to keep my Ravelry notes and project notes very very up to date and as detailed as I can so I will link my Ravelry page below um, just in case you want a more detailed description on how on how I did these modifications. The second modification was the sleeve. I tend to modify my sleeves quite a lot. I like I like a bit of positive ease and when I looked at the photos that were of the testers on Instagram and in the pattern, the sleeves, particularly around the forearm, it seemed to be quite fitted and I just wanted a little bit more, a little bit more room. So I just decreased, I think it was every 12th round, so a slightly slower decrease rate than was intended by the designer but it still has that tapered effect it's just a little bit roomier and I am quite happy with it I would do it again yeah as I say I will link my Ravelry down below the only thing I would say is if you're someone who likes a chart this pattern doesn't have charts all of the instructions are in written form which I personally prefer and I'm more in inclined to follow but I know that that's not that's not for everyone, so I thought that was worth pointing out. And and I have seen going about Instagram that the cardigan version is in testing. I am so excited! I will be casting it on as soon as the pattern is released. So yes, I'm very excited for the cardigan version. And that and that is my finished objects. So next. I'll talk about my whips. I have three main whips on the go at the moment. I always have a garment on the go, a bigger project, whether that's you know a sweater or a cardigan or a slipover. And I like to have a whip on the go that's quite a mindless knit, something which I can knit in the cinema, knit while watching telly, knit at social occasions um, when I'm out and about. And then I like to have something which is quite a little bit more challenging and it requires a little bit more concentration. Something with, you know, cables like my field sweater or colour work or lace work. Yeah, it's just, it's just what works for me. I have an excess of whips. I like to cast things on. I have the big box of things which do need to, I do need to work through, I'm sure or I hope a lot of you can relate to having quite a few whips. So 
So my first whip is the Single Malt Sweater by Maxim the Knitter. Um, my plan for this is for my fiance's Christmas present and I didn't, we are going to be twinning it would seem. <laughs> I didn't even realise. It would be quite nice. Um, I started this back in May with with it in mind that it was going to be finished for December. It's a complete, complete secret and he has, well, I hope he's not aware of it. So it has taken me a while, but that's because I've only been able to work on it when he's not around, when I've been in knit groups. So it has been quite a slow process. Um, and it seems to be that this pattern is the go-to um, boyfriend, husband sweater. I've seen a lot of podcasters make this. It's most definitely where the inspiration for this came from. I think it was Laura Penrose, who vlogmas ago made this for her husband, and I know Venetia has made it for her boyfriend as well. And yes, I love it. It's this beautiful, beautiful all over textured pattern, and it has a two by two rib for the collar and the cuffs. Yeah, I will give you a little close up of the stitch pattern. I am really, really happy with it. It's beautiful. And something which I didn't really realise until I was working it is actually, how clever is this? The, the ribbing, the two by two rib, it starts in the collar and it comes down to the raglan all the way along. And then, it goes all the way up the sleeve. I haven't, I've steam blocked the body, but I haven't steam blocked the sleeve, that's why it's a bit. And then into the cuff. I'm knitting this in Cascade 220 in the shade Walnut. I think it's in the Heather, the Heathered range of Cascade, of colours Cascade 220 do. Yeah, it's a beautiful colour. It's incredibly similar to the, well, it's a bit darker. And yeah, it is so lovely and soft. This yarn, I think I have to say it's one of my favourites. It's it's a pleasure to work with. It, it feels really nice when it's working through your hands. On things like this, when it's got quite a textured pattern to it, it's really nice. It gives quite a nice definition to your, your texture and your stitches. I have steam blocked the body and it's really, really soft. And it has a softened, I mean, it's soft when it's not blocked and it just seems to soften. So I'm really, really excited to, to block it. I am making size four. I have slightly lengthened it in the body and in the sleeve. It's really difficult to, to gauge when, when I'm trying to do it on the quiet. Um, what I've tended to do is just, this is the first sweater I've made from him, so it's not even like I've got another one to, to base measurements off. So I'm just taking his favourite sweater that he wears quite a lot and lining it up until it's the same length in the body and the sleeve and the yoke depth. And I'm just hoping that it'll fit. If it doesn't, I might just have to keep it for myself and it will be a nice, like almost really long cover, cover my bum with a pair of leggings. It'll be quite nice and I'll just rip the sleeves back a bit. So, you know, every cloud, every cloud. Um, the only modification I've made, as I said, lengths. And I have made the sleeve like this one, slightly roomier. I've decreased every eighth round instead of every four. And that's just a slow, a slower decrease rate, um, just so it's not so fitted. Bit of room. I actually followed Venetia, Venetia again, at The Woolly Worker. She has an incredible Ravelry page with so much detail on her projects. And she has 
details on how she did the sleeves and it was in a very very similar way. Um, the only thing with this project is the bind off. I love an Italian bind off. I've done an Italian bind off on every sweater. Yeah, done on this. I just love how it looks. I love the stretch. It's just beautiful and clean. This is a two by two by one rib. So, I mean, I'm sure there's a way to do some kind of stretchy bind off, tubular bind off. But I wasn't rearranging stitches. So I have done something called a Rooks bind off, which I had never heard of. I mean, you can clearly see the bind off edge. It's a stretchy bind off. I mean, it doesn't have as much give as your Italian bind off, but it's nice and it looks okay. It's not as clean, but. I think what makes it okay and quite nice is that there is a row of purling before we do the cuff and then we've got almost a definitive bind off. So I think by having that row of purling it just makes it that little bit more acceptable. So yes, I'm hoping the next time I podcast this will be done. This will be a finished project. One more sleeve to go. It's on scrap yarn at the moment. I'm really happy with this. I think I would like to get it done this month so then my main Christmas project is kind of out of the way. I do have quite a few Christmas whips on the go for different family members and I mean the likelihood of them watching this video is quite high so I thought I would make a separate video. If you're interested in that you can let me know, leave a comment and I would be more than happy to share all my Christmas gifting, all my Christmas whips. Um, it's probably quite a good thing to put up in November, beginning of December, so that people have time if there's a pattern that they are quite taken to. They have time to make it. It's just an idea. Let me know. So my next whip is a scarf. It's a scarf which I've had on the go for some time. It's, it's a really simple, simple knit. And it's something that I kind of, it's easy to pick up and put down. And when I pick it up, I tend to knit quite a lot on it. But it has languished for some time. But this is the Soul Sister Scarf by Sari Norland. It has this beautiful, beautiful dip stitch running running through running through it and I just love it so it starts it starts with this beautiful point now I haven't blocked this and I think blocking will just work wonders for it it will just straighten out the edge and I also think it's going to encourage it just to open up and bloom a little bit. So yes, I love it. I love it and I actually can't wait to get it done. Now that I've actually like got it out and chewed it, I'm quite excited about it. See, it's on scrap yarn because I'm using my needles. I have too many whips on the go and not enough cables. I am making this using quite a special yarn. Oh, it's running away. This is the yarn. I don't have it skeined up. I will try and include a photo. I really hope I took a photo when I got it. If this is a beautiful, beautiful hand spun yarn. I got this at the Scottish Wool Producers Showcase in Perth um, in March. So this is from the Luna Bay Farm. I'll show you the card. The Luna Bay Farm. This is homegrown Scottish cashmere, gently hand combed from our Scottish cashmere goats. It's reared harvested and spun in Scotland. So it's hand spun and they're based in Fife, which is not too far away from me. So it felt even more special. It was very, very exciting. They only had a very limited number of skeins, hand spun skeins. 
and I got two of them. So because of that, with that in mind, my gauge is slightly narrower than is intended. So I just cast it on and when I finished my first skein, I popped in a little marker. So this black's halfway and then I'm just going to knit all the way down. So I have this much to go. Put this a little left. So yes, it is, I mean, it's completely off gauge, but I'm okay with that because it's a scarf. It's a scarf. I'm okay with it being off gauge. I'm not, I just can't get over that black. I love it so much. I love the stitch. It is 10% Scottish cashmere, 45% Scottish alpaca and 45% merino. So yeah, incredibly, incredibly soft. And I cannot wait to have this around my neck. Beautiful. Um, now that I've shared it, I have this urge just to finish it, so I might have to do that. So hopefully, next time, it may be finished. Not making any promises though. And my final kind of active whip is, I'm sure you will all recognise this. Are we ready? Um, this way. It is the one and only Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. I love this pattern. From when she first shared it on her YouTube, I was like, oh my god, I need to know, I need to figure out how to do that because she said she wasn't releasing it as a pattern, it was just something for her, a pure joy project. Okay, okay, okay. So I was looking on Ravelry for similar things, couldn't find anything. And then out of the blue, complete surprise, she released the pattern. And I couldn't be more grateful. I have always said, I'm not a blanket knitter. It's going to take so, so long. And then I might get bored of it. And then you've committed to this thing. And it's, it's a project which is cast on for months if not years and I can't, the thought of that hanging over me but this this just feels different I love how you, you work a square at a time and you're picking up stitches and it's short rows I love short rows they're one of my favorite things in knitting and I love that the white I think everyone I've seen has used white as the main colour. I would love to see it with a different main colour. I like the white, so that's why I, I also went with. Um, quite a few of these are, are still, I mean, a few are scraps. This pink one was, uh, I made a pair of socks last Christmas for my soon-to-be mother-in-law. Um, these these three here these are all scraps this is the long Vec anna june and i can't remember it i will write it on the screen it's like the orangey autumn rust one it's really really nice and then this is a nervous fiber which i made a sem semper sweater from so these were all left over i've got a combination of dk weight and then fingering weight held double so yeah I went a little mini scheme mad at the Scottish Yarn Festival in September and got quite a lot from Zakami and Nervous Fibre. That is what's in this blanket. I'm not too sure about the, the blue and the bright pink. I think I'm just going to go with it. My intention is to make the throw size, so I'm hoping a couple more bright colours here and there will just kind of make it what it is um, and the white I'm using is so beautifully soft it is the West Yorkshire Spinners Fleece so it's a VFL I think it's 100% VFL if I'm not right I will correct myself but um, yeah it's beautiful I love it um, this is one skein so I have another one in my stash, but I think I will have to get more if I'm doing like 90 odd squares. But yeah, I'm really, really happy with this. Um, 
and yeah Laura is also bringing out it is a cushion it's like a, um, a quilt I think it's Stella quilt cushion and I think there might be two different quilting quilting star designs I think it's the end of the year so I'm hoping that I'll be able to make a cushion again using my stash because that would be great so yeah sweet shop vodka and that they are my three main whips so i suppose the last thing to do is acquisitions i feel like every episode there won't be acquisitions but i'd like to at least share some plans or patterns that I've seen that are on my radar but this time I do have acquisitions because in September as I mentioned I went to the Scottish Yard Festival in Perth. It was a wonderful wonderful day I spent it with my knitting buddies and yeah it was just a yarn filled day and I came away with some goodies. So first a little basket of yarn. First thing I wanted to share. I haven't I tried and resisted winding this up. The first thing is this beautiful, beautiful nervous fiber four ply. And I have two skeins of it. It is it's in the colourway glass. I hope that's how you say it. G L Y S. Glice. And it, the base is alpaca cashmere silk. 70% alpaca, 20% cashmere, and 10% silk. It's four ply, and you get 400 meters in 100 grams. And I think this is the most softest, possibly the most luxurious yarn. I have ever owned. It is next to skin, like next level soft. It's got a lovely, lovely, like slight halo to it. I'm not sure you can see that. Slight fluff to it. And oh my gosh. Very, very happy. Feel very, very lucky to get this. I know that Charlotte is going to have a baby very soon and will be going on maternity leave. So all my nervous fiber. I'm trying to stock up on nervous fiber. Um, I have a few skins in stash, I've got Rab or Sadvent coming in January, I've got this and I know she's going to the Glasgow School of Yarn so I might need to get more from her then. I am delighted. It is the most beautiful, it's not showing up on camera quite as red, it looks more like a brown orange on camera but actually in real life it's got, it's more red and it's like the perfect autumn colour. My plan for this is to make the one and only Toasted Tea by Rebecca Clo at the Crea Bear. I have seen, I've been watching Rebecca's podcast for a very long time. I love all of her designs and I've seen so many Toasted Teas and every time I see one I think I need that, I need to knit that. It's perfect. It's the most perfect basic to have. Um, so this is going to be our toasted tea. I think because it's so soft, so luxurious, it has to be next to skin. So it needs to be something that if I'm layering, it has to be the bottom layer. So, very excited. Very tempted to cast it on. But I really should finish either the single malt or my scarf. I might just cast it. So yeah, toasted tea. I wanted to know. I am debating whether to hold it double and make the DK weight version, which I think was the original. Or do I do the four ply version? I do like how the fabric of the four ply and fingering weight yarn it looks. Let me know. Have you made the toasted tea? And did you hold it, hold the DK yarn or did you do the full ply version? I'd love to know. 
I love all the advice. Um, my next purchase at the Yarn Festival. I mean, I've been drawn to the very autumn colours. I think these might be my colours. It's my favourite time of year, so makes sense. <laughs> I apologise for this, how bad the sticking looks. This is not how it came, just to be clear. I have taken out and tried to like reskin it. So this is my doing. This is the BFL sock. It is 425 meters per 100 grams. It's a four ply fingering, 75% blue face lister wool and 25% um, nylon. It's from Needle and Fred. I had never heard of Needle and Fred. I'm not going to, to lie. They were at the Yarn Festival. They had the most beautiful it was the most aesthetically pleasing stand and all their colours were, were gorgeous and they had like, I have never, I'm going to be honest, I've never seen a BFL sock. All the socks that I've knit in the past and or superwash merino and nylon or merino and nylon or but yeah, the BFL. So it's definitely not the most silky soft superwash merino sock is I wouldn't say it's rustic but it's not I would wear this on my feet quite happily but I can probably tolerate woolly wools more than most yeah I mean it's still lovely and soft it's just not silky silky superwash merino just to make make you wear again it feels quite dry similar to the um knitting for all but yeah i'm very excited about this i will take it out of the skein because i've already done this um my plan is to make a pair of socks what kind of socks i don't know um so again sock recommendations please uh that beautiful autumn again it's coming this is as well as coming off more brown and orange on camera it's a little bit more red so yeah I kind of I'm very very pleased with it I'm not very good at predicting how hand dyed yarns are going to knit up um, it looks beautiful in the scheme it looks beautiful unraveled but I am still none the wiser on how these socks will look. But it's a pair of socks, so if they're striping or pooling or anything like that, I'm okay with that because it's just a pair of socks. It'd be a bit, it'd be a bit different if it was in a garment. But um, yeah, a pair of socks, not a problem. Um, there is a beautiful pair. There's a few beautiful pairs by Fibre Tail. I'll pop them in one with bees on it and I I love bees so I am thinking that maybe those ones I can't remember the name of them again I will add it on the screen uh, any other recommendations or suggestions yeah send them my way I'm always in the market for new patterns socks please and my final um, acquisition I suppose it's not what you call it an acquisition I have a ski just over a skein and a half left of this wool I bought eight skeins of this from beautiful litters and only used what six and just under six and a half skeins for this jumper so I have quite a bit left love this color Again, I mean it's dry, but I would be okay wearing it on my head. I'm thinking a hat for myself. I'm making a lot of hats as gift knits for Christmas, and I usually haven't hand knit myself a hat. I tend to give them give them away. So I'm thinking there's the Gore Gore Grow. Is that how you say it? The Grow hats by Fiber Tails again. I'll add it in. I'm hoping I'll have enough wool for this. It's 50 grams, 125 meters in the skin. I have to weigh the other one. 
yeah that is what I'm thinking and then that will get all of this yarn out of stash so yeah that that's kind of my three near future if not immediate plans um, as I say every video might not have acquisitions just depends what I've been up to that month um, oh I I'm on the lookout for yarn and it's what I have in my mind for when I go to Glasgow the December bow by Petit Knit. I mean this pattern has been out for quite a while and she, um, she put a video on her Instagram of her wearing it in her hair and I saw that as I'm sure most people did and thought oh my god I need to make a December bow and put a hair clip in it. That is like kind of next on my radar when it comes to yarn purchases. So oh, that was a lot of yarn chat, a lot of knitting chat. I really enjoyed it. Um, thank you all for watching. I hope you it was some form of entertainment for you too. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye now.